Hello all you Suicide Warriors, Dan Pelly here, inspirational speaker, Suicide Warrior. The topic of this video is shame and guilt to acceptance and self-love. And this is the battle that we have to fight in our life when things don't go the way we would like them to go. And you know, when I was younger, you know, I would pull out of things quicker and never thought about depression. But you know, in my late 30s, you know, your life, you know, you're embedded into life and marriage, a house, kids, you know, businesses are doing good. And then all of a sudden, you know, when things don't work out and, it, and, it's, and you're feeling, and then, you know, you feel like, oh, geez, I'm such a loser. I couldn't keep my marriage going. And, and you know, and I've had successful relationships long term, you know, and it's like this depression that I didn't even know about really lies to you. And, you know, to get into this acceptance of, you know, things happen, we're going to feel, you know, you hear many inspirational speakers talk about failure is going to help you grow. And that's true, you know, failure does help you grow. And depression is different, where if you're definitely, you know, clinically depressed, and you have suicide ideation, yes, we want to grow as a practicing Buddhist now, we want to turn our poison into medicine, but how do we get there? How do we overcome this shame and guilt that we have? Because, you know, when I lost everything, you know, back in 1996 in my late 30s, and then, you know, a tragedy struck when my stepdaughter almost got killed in 2010, I had these two attempts, and I'm so lucky that I didn't, you know, accomplish what I was trying to do and regretted, you know, even getting to that moment. And I said to myself, it's not your fault, Dan. It isn't your fault. Because stigma kills in this world and how we're looked at by society. I think there's more acceptance now that people do suffer in their own way. And people like, you know, you had so much or recent celebrities. And I think about all the people that, you know, that are not talked about that die, you know, alone. And I want to help people try to choose life and, and stay with it. Because overcoming the shame and guilt took some time. Because once you lose everything and you feel, you're saying to yourself, it will never be this way again for me. I'll never have another relationship, which is a lie. And I'll never run another business, which is a lie. And, you know, I'll never come out of this pain and suffering, which is another lie that the depression keeps telling me. And how do I get to the part of acceptance, you know, accepting that, okay, you know, you lost everything, you lost the marriage, you know, you lost the business, you moved, you got depressed, it's not your fault, it's not your fault to get depressed, it wasn't my fault that I got depressed, did I want to get depressed, of course not, I didn't even know what depression was, I never even thought of suicide, but then when the depression took a hold of me, and I got clinically depressed, more self-loathing. And then I was shameful for being sick. I was shameful, like, how dare you get sick? You gotta be tough. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, you know, and how dare you, you know, be weak. You know, and men have the biggest problem with this is like, you know, you can't be weak. And men get weak. Men suffer in silence. And women suffer in silence. But men in particular, you know, they, 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 they feel like I'm not a gladiator. I'm not a warrior today. You know, but you are a warrior when you're trying to fight to live and choose life. And I thought about this more and more. And I said, you know, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. And I have to accept the fact that I was sick. And it's a disease like any other disease. And we and we say to ourselves, you know, why am I being judged? You know, because I'm quiet or I'm reserved or, you know, my head's down and I'm, and I'm suffering and, and, and get all this guilt going on. And then I got to the point where, you know, after months and months and months and then the attempts occurred and, you know, and I regret them. And I regret that I even got to that moment that I would not respect my own life and not respect your own being and who you are. And then the regret about how you would leave people behind hurting. 
you know, people matter too in your life and you would you'd be hurting, you know, in that sense and you would hurt so many people. And, and all this regret and all this shame and all this guilt. But then, you know, what happens is, you know, it really becomes your responsibility as a human being, you know, that you start valuing yourself again. And it took time for me. I said, no, I am a good human being. I've done a lot of good in my life. Hey, we all make mistakes. We all have problems. But I kept going through this and then when I got to these moments and I'm so glad that I wasn't successful and I just got done watching A Wonderful Life and how much of a void I would have left and then all the time that has went by since 1996 and, and then in 2010 I would have missed out on so much of life where I got another relationship and I started feeling worthy again in my life not just because of the relationship I had a standalone spirit for a couple of years easily where I just said, you know, I got to be okay with Dan. I got to self-love. I got to care for myself. I got to love myself. You got to love yourself. And that was a lot of big, you know, it was a big problem for me to, to the self-loathing and not loving yourself and who you were. And once I started realizing, no, I am a good person and I got to love myself and it's okay. And then it slowly, you know, after the first attempt, I oh, I'll never do this again. You can never say never. A tragedy in 2010. And my stepdaughter almost got killed. She's doing a lot better today. And she's 30 years old. And, you know, she does suffer with a TBI. But she's a wonderful, inspirational person. She inspires me for the fight that she put up to keep living life and choosing life. And that's the thing, you know, once I made a determination, I started practicing Buddhism 14 years ago and made a determination that I'm not going back and I'm going to, I'm going to choose life. And this is what I'm going to do. But as I'm, I'm, I'm doing my Buddhism and chanting and, and doing everything I'm trying to do with the SGI, you know, great organization. And, um, you know, I, I, I was still suffering. I was dragging myself to meetings and I was still self-loathing and, like it is stuck and you can, and, and you say to yourself, I'm never going to come out of this. I'm never going to stop being sick. But then I took action. You got to take action. And I started going to recovery programs. You know, I did any kind of medication to keep myself safe. You know, it just depends and get the right therapist. You know, I went through many therapists and I, and, and I, you know, I found the right person for, for, for many years. I don't see him anymore, but, you know, for the past five, six years, I've been making videos and really putting myself out there and overcoming that shame that I would try to hurt myself. And that was my biggest battle. And that's the thing that I had to win over to make that first video six years ago. And now I'm helping so many people. And I, you know, I can't help everybody. You know, we can't save everybody. But I know I've helped a lot of people and I continue to help a lot of people to have this acceptance, to accept who you are. You're you, I'm me. We're not this person on the internet or I wish I was like that person valuing yourself and who you are and the type of person that you are in in good bad or indifference you are who you are and i had this awakening one day that i have to value my life i have to value who i am and Regrets are regrets, you know, but we can't keep looking back. You know, we learn from the past, but we have to start from today and move forward and then get into the self-love. You know, this self-love is powerful. You know, once you really love who you are, mistakes just fall, fall away. You know, we're going to keep making mistakes. We're going to be successful. We're going to keep making mistakes. And these things are going to keep occurring in your life. But once you have this self-love and you give yourself a big hug today and you say, you know what? If I have to have a standalone spirit, then I'll stand alone. But I'll never go back. And I'm not going to leave this world under my own hands. You know? And let the natural.
actually take its course. So, you know, it is a wonderful life. I, you know, watching the movie just recently and, you know, he said he was, wish he was never born. Or someone says, I wish I was dead. You know, we, we mustn't talk this way because when you realize, you know, that if I'm successful, I'll never have a chance to live life again or have another relationship and do things and, and, and just feel okay with who you are and get up every day with a purpose. You know what your purpose is. You have a purpose in this world and you know it better than anybody. And I never thought that I would be doing this in my life. If I ever thought back 25 years ago saying, I'm going to be a suicide warrior and I'm going to try to help as many people as I can to choose life. It can bring back a lot into your life and who you are. And, and, and just finding that mission, you know, when you find some mission, whether it's helping people, you know, when you help others, it helps you. And then you start feeling all this self-worth and you say, you know what, it's not just all about the money or the relationships all the time. It's just about being. You don't have to be like, you know, go 100 miles an hour all the time. You got to be content. You know, when someone said to me, you know, she was really crying and, and I said, you know, and, and she was alone. I said, you know, although I'm alone, I'm content. That's the victory. The victory is being content in your heart. That yeah, it's mundane sometimes. Life can be mundane. It's not always going to be exciting. We we shouldn't be self medicating and, and and drugs and drinking and you know all these things that we're trying to we're running from some pain in the past. Obviously, you know I've had a lot of pain in my past too, but I've had a lot of happiness too. You know, let's not forget about the happiness. Okay. You can be happy again. You can come back stronger. I just did a TV interview that's coming out in the middle of January. It's called Come Back Stronger. I'm living proof. You can come back stronger. I wasn't talking like this when I was depressed and suicide ideation and, and, and the attempts that I did. And, and, and I'm not proud of them, obviously, but, you know, Depression lies to us, and it wants us to be shameful, and it wants us to be self-loathing. But once you accept who you are as a human being, and once you start self-loving, there's no stopping you. You'll be able to flourish. You'll live a life. You know, we, we're, we're not all, you know, successfully, you know, big money type of success or something. It just it, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The money doesn't matter. The biggest richness that you can give yourself is acceptance and self-love. This is the key to really feel good about your life. Because and then when things do go wrong or you do have loss, you say, okay, this is where I'm at. But of course, if you get depressed or you get clinically depressed, you need to seek medical attention. You, if you're on that edge of that moment and you, and you want to do something drastic, call the 988 number. It's a great number to call and they'll listen to you. And you'll be able to talk to somebody and you'll be able to get directed towards some help. Don't just sit there in, in, in secrecy and in, in self-loathing and in, in hurting and in depressed because it, it, it's hard to pull out sometimes on your own. And then once you get some help, you know, you start really getting going in your life again. And you'll get back on your feet. I'm telling you, you will. So, you know, and I suffered for many, many months. You know, I couldn't pick my head up. I wasn't talking like this. And you'll become a warrior's ruse too. But the thing about a warrior is, which I know all the men and women that are listening, you're warriors. You can win again because that's what worry is about fighting this battle that we have to fight every day and we can be okay with life and everything's going to be all right everything's going to be okay you're going to be all right i'm living proof and you're going to come back stronger
So I want to leave you with that. Never give up. And I'll be posting the link on this interview that I did. It was very intense about this whole regret and shame and guilt and, and just really showing people that, you know, this is my story, but you have your story too. And, you know, I look at these uh, speakers and people that, you know, that don't follow other people, like even the people that don't have a lot of followers. You know, I follow everybody, you know, just because I'm, I'm not a huge name. I, I never understood why they don't follow you, you know, I'm not saying why you're judging and why they don't follow you, but I don't see why you shouldn't uh, follow somebody because your life matters as much as theirs and they should be following everybody that follows them. That's how I feel. So I follow everybody. I want to see your life too, you know, I just want you to see my life and what I'm talking about. I want to see your life and what you're about because your life matters and you're important. And I'm going to leave you with my Buddhist prayer that I do on all my videos. For you, especially for you, and for your family and your friends, good health, protection, wisdom, compassion, courage, determination, mission, happiness, family, and good fortune, and total victory. I'm Dan Pelley, inspirational speaker, and I'll see you on the next video.